My name is Loki, Loki Lani, and Heather is my co-host for this presentation. We're going to get into Canva. And if you might not have heard when you were jumping in, uh, Chris asked a great question. He asked, what is this conversation going to look like? Is it going to get super technical? Are we going to get into a deep dive of how to use Canva? Not really. This is designed to kind of be an overview and Heather and I want to take this approach of myself as a little bit more experienced in graphic design and Heather brand new to Canva and brand new to design, but working her way up. We're hoping that our experience and that combination will be able to give you all a better understanding of best design practices as a whole and how Canva can help you in that arena. So welcome to Canva 101. Okay, so right out of the gate, I want to touch on um, one of the first things about Canva, which is pro versus free. So Canva itself obviously has different tiers um, of pricing and availability. There's the free version, there's the pro version, business and all that. One of the key features of pro is that you can, that I like as a graphic designer and that you might like as a business owner or somebody who needs to use variations of designs um, for whether you're printing out posters or looking to create stickers or um, print out flyers, things like that, is that you have the option to export high resolution and resize any of your creations automatically. When you're in the free version, it works. You can copy and paste and recreate things like that and resize it and scale it, but it just is easier. You can get by on the free version. I've done it. It's just the pro version. And I think it's like 11 or 12 bucks a month, I think is what you can do for the pro version. It's just, it's a good investment. I think, especially when you compare it to higher end programs like Adobe InDesign, um, those ones you're, you're looking at a way higher price tag. So Canva is super friendly and it also comes with great things that we're gonna talk about later, like templates, free assets and elements. Uh, videos that you can use, photos that you can use, all of that we're going to touch on. The other thing that makes Pro different and stand out than the free version is that you can easily build and save your branding kit within the platform itself. So whenever you're looking to create a brand design for your business or your um, for personal use, it, it depends on what your what your project exactly that you're doing. You want to have a few key things lined up. You want to have ideally, if you're looking a logo to put this out to the world, something that kind of ties everything together, specific colors, and we'll touch on more of this, um, specific colors that you're using and uh, any fonts that you wanna use. With the pro version, you can put all of this into a branding kit and have it readily available. You can also give other team members access in addition to that, and they can easily access your branding kit to know what colors, what logos, all of that stuff to use. There's also, my pro tip is that there's the app that you can download and you can do quick fixes on your mobile device. I don't personally like that because I have nails and I'm clunky and I should be better at using my smartphone and my tablet, but I'm not. I'm older and spirit, so I like using everything on my computer. It's just easier for me. But younger people, I've heard, like using the mobile app and they're really fast and snappy with it. So, You know, it's great if I've ever noticed like a um issue with like a just even a simple typo like i'll send something out and then i'll look at it, oh crap and i can go in and do that super quick fix on mobile that's really what it's good for when it comes to the mobile app is that quick like spelling check we went crap that's the crap yes absolutely absolutely it's super great for quick fixes on the go when maybe you can't get back to your laptop or you can't connect to Wi-Fi to do it on your computer, you can easily access anything that you're working on on your phone, on your iPad, whatever, your tablet and quickly fix it. So with that, we're gonna jump a little bit more into branding. This is just a general design um, overview, right? As we talked about. So your brand kit should include high resolution logos. That varies with what, um, I don't wanna get too much into the technical term and you can always ask at the end or you know, reach out to me via email. Um, I'll drop it into the chat somewhere at some point, but, um, high resolution, it varies for what you're going to need, but you want to have an all color version, a an all black version and all white version of your logo. You also want to have the font and the font family and any color schemes that you're looking to 
key. You'll notice in the way that this branding has been set up on the design of the presentation, that's the AMA colors, right? The background, you can see a little bit of the faded logo, right? Our AMA logo, it's, it's all chosen and key and specific to keep everything correlating to the AMA brand into AMA Las Vegas. Another pro tip, this is just my own little thing as far as like logos go or fonts in general too. Anything that's a part of your brand kit Picture your logo everywhere. A huge thing for, I don't know if this was just millennials, um, but handwriting style has been a huge thing in the past like five, 10 years. People that are making logos, they want to make it that handwritten script or something dainty and light like that. Um, it's great on a computer. It's not great on the side of a building. It's not great on a billboard. It's signatures are very hard to read. There's a reason why the branding right there you see is thick and big and like bold, right? You want to be able to see it, right? So picture that on a billboard on the side of a freeway, picture that on somebody's phone, picture it in various locations and really visualize how your overall brand is looking when you're getting started. Plenty of time for a rebrand if needed, but honestly, just it's something to think about as far as like colors and schemes and, and typefaces and, and logos as a whole. And I'll stay on the topic of typefaces. If you are going to redesign and you're looking at different fonts, try to pick something that's open source, what's downloadable that you can put anywhere. Canva itself, you can upload custom fonts into it as part of your branding kit. So we're going to jump into templates. Um, templates are great. They're a great word, great place, great way to start if you have zero design and, and experience and Canva has a whole wide range of templates, you can easily tweak them and adjust them as needed. Um, they're, they're great. Heather. So I am someone where I need inspiration. Um, so going, especially with the approach of Google it, look at what else is going around. What type of event are you doing? Um, what is the theme? What is what you're going for? And not only Google it, but also use the templates that are in um, Canva itself. You can take something that's super pink and fluffy and purple and something you're not even thinking of, but it's got the elements that you want in it. It's got the amount of writing that you want in it. It's got kind of where you want things placed. You can change color. You can change background. You can change font. You can change everything, but at least it's giving you a jumping off point where all of those elements are on the screen you just got to change them out for what your look that you're going for is. um and i always say videos facebook was anything like template wise it's in there you just got to hunt for it um but you've got to be on pro most of the time to have access to most of them um you'll notice as you're looking through templates on canva there's going to be a little crown in the corner if that crown is there, that means that if you're on pro, you have access to it. So just referencing back to that pro versus free version, pro definitely is going to give you access to a lot more of those templates. And I, oh, sorry, Chris, do you have a question? Quick question. Uh, when you, when you, um, when you change a template, when you customize that template, can you then save it as another template going forward? You can absolutely do that. It's super easy. It automatically, saves it as a new project whenever you go and start editing something. It's now your own project. And then in the upper right-hand corner is going to be untitled or it'll pull the name from the template and you can change it to whatever you want. Um, I'm currently working on something for AMA where I literally have things labeled like Facebook posts, Facebook banner, Facebook ad, and you're able to really group the projects together and change it in any way that you want to when you save it. Gotcha. Thank you. And I, I do want to add before we move on from templates that that Canva has a unique feature to it that their design teams have gone in and especially for things like social media posts where you may want to have multiple identical or things that kind of look in the same family of design and as well with presentation decks, they have designs that you can go and you can click into, especially if you're in the pro. Um, click in, see multiple versions pop up and populate of essentially a template, a theme of templates that kind of fall into the same design. And then you can tweak it from there. 
So that's also a great thing if you're looking and you just like the design of one, you may get the option to select further into the template to see multiple variations that are all within the same family of design in case you're doing something like a, you know, 101 series or something on social media that's very beneficial. So one thing that I want to touch on as far as design goes overall is that simple is best. Um, a lot of people and working now in, in advertising, but having a background in marketing, a lot of people want to put everything up there right up front. They want to get everything out. They want to have the last word. They want to be able to say everything. Even right now, I'm rambling. I like talking. They want it all there. But in reality, white and or it's called dead space. It's your friend. So you realistically, you only have like less than three seconds to grab somebody's attention. You want whatever is most important to be at the forefront, the largest, and leave space around it for their eyes to rest. If you're having, if I had an entire, you know, 1500 word essay written on this presentation right here, you guys would be losing your marbles. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't know what to focus on or what to look at. So that's something that is key. And I want to add on my pro tip is that whatever your brand is, whatever your business is, that should be the one thing that sticks out. They will Google it and find out everything else they need to know from that. So let's see. Um, one other benefit that Canva has that a lot of people don't realize is that you have the option to edit photos in there. You can upload your own photography and you can utilize Canva free or pro. The amount of availability on as far as editing goes kind of varies, but you can use this to help brighten color balance and, and change things, apply different filters. If you get the pro version, you can do things like remove backgrounds, um, tweak and alter. You can pixelate things. You can do even more, right? But within um, Canva itself, you have the ability to access their um, bank of photos in addition to a couple of apps that they have that have their own freestanding websites too that I like using. Uh, they're called Pexels and Pixabay. Those are copyright free photos. And I think Pexels has videos as well that you can download and use and they are high resolution. You can take them from Pexels and Pixabay and import them into Canva, but Canva has them as apps within the Canva platform itself now since increase of popularity. This is something that is huge for any small business owner, you know, having access to great photos. Yes, we can take things on our iPhones and on our, you know, Samsung devices The the quality is getting up there and getting higher and getting even better. But having access to a wide range of copyright free photos and videos that are just free to use is amazing. Great for any kind of content creation. So I highly recommend. And so then I'm going to jump into a little bit about videos and animation, because that's a huge thing in, honestly, like, I feel like it's, we've seen it ramp up from like 2015, 16, and it's just only gone up there. And now we're getting into AI, which I don't want to talk about, but Canva, I do want to add that Canva has started to play with AI. I have not gotten into their, um, what they have available as far as AI goes. Um, so if anybody has any questions on that, I might not have an answer for you on that, but they do have now they're starting to add, um, AI features in their platform, but videos and animation, that's a huge thing, uh, for social media, for digital branding, for any, your, any kind of presence online videos and animation are huge, right? So you can easily add video clips or animations, whether you went out and filmed something yourself, you save the file, you can upload it straight to Canva and add it in for more dynamic displays. You can use that for social media, your email marketing and more, but they also have access to a bank of videos and graphics. Like you saw the Canva motion on the Canva 101. That's 100% Canva. I did not build that and it came free. So it's great for that. Um, my pro tip, you should um, just to make things easier for you. You don't have to duplicate the designs if you don't want to. Let's say you have a stories post that you made and it has, you know, motion to it or movement. You can export the file as an MP4 and then also as a PNG or a JPEG without having to remove the animation or the 
um, movement from it, it'll just export flat. So then you have a video version of the file and then you have a static version as well, which just kind of makes things easier. So I just want to touch a little bit on print versus digital. So this kind of goes back to picturing your branding and your logo and your design and kind of where it might end up. This is key. The way um, designs show up in different variations, it matters where it's going to be displayed. Think about this with it being dark versus light. If it's text heavy versus text light, every kind of choice for color and for font and for sizing, all of that comes into play for the final design. If you can preview it, I highly recommend previewing it if you have that option, just so you get a better idea of it. But um, a lot of people kind of choose like multiple colors and things like that for um, billboards and they want a whole slew of text at the bottom. And I'm like, somebody's gonna be driving, realistically it's Vegas, so it'll be 85, 90 miles an hour on the freeway they're not going to be able to read your, you know, 30 word sentence at all. They're barely going to see print versus digital on it being 50%. And realistically, what's the most important thing? I circle back to branding. It should be your logo. It should be your business's name, your name, if that's at the forefront, whatever that is, that should be um, key. So that's my pro tip as far as, um, Look, thinking about where it's going to be displayed is if you have the option to preview it, always, always preview it. But do think about these things. Uh, a lot of people have been opting for dark backgrounds with light text. It is very readable. It's easier on the eyes, in, in my opinion, for um, driving daytime, nighttime. It kind of is like, you know, but if you're going to do an all white background with black text and the text isn't that heavy and it's on the side of a, you know, Allegiant Stadium, that's a huge display. But if it's 100 degrees in the middle of summer and it's there's zero clouds in the sky, the reflection on that, you might not be able to see it as well, you know? So let's talk a little bit about copyright. That is, because um, I did mention that copyright is uh, one of the benefits to Pexels and Pixabay and getting free for use. Be wary of copyright laws and usage when you're uploading things to Canva. Um, even if, let's say, you work at a, you know, a small doctor's office and you want to just look for somebody in a lab coat um, or you know holding a clipboard and you want that photo, if you're just googling it and you find that photo and you throw it into Canva realistically, the odds of them coming after you are pretty slim, but just be aware that it is a possibility. And this includes the assets are that, that are within Canva itself. In the past, um, since 2020, I've seen a rise in small business owners doing things like creating templates or creating designs in Canva and then taking them over to Etsy or taking them over to Redbubble or taking them over to another platform to sell prints of these versions. If you have Canva Pro, there are specific copyright rules that allow you to use these designs for your own business, for your own benefit. But if you are profiting off of the, you know, the, the original design, their original Canva co you know, copyright, they won't allow that for all of their designs or for many of their designs. So you could end up getting slapped with a copyright violation and having to pay a, a huge fee potentially. If you create, you know, a simple poster design and you're just selling it on a third party website, prints of that, you could end up being charged later. So just be aware of that. And my pro tip for anything with copyright always is always err on the side of caution if you're unsure of anything. Canva is great. It has a lot of um, a lot of tools, a lot of free usage available within it, but just be aware of that. Um, the reality is, is most businesses, they won't notice or catch you or even be aware that it's even happening. There are businesses like the NFL, like Disney, who like going after small creators, who like harassing them, who like taking them to court because they have the time. The House of Mouse in the past has famously gone after children's hospitals because they had Winnie the Pooh on the wall. 
and they didn't pay for licensing usage of that character. So just be aware of these things. And also be aware of your own guidelines within your company. Um, depending how large your company is, there might be guidelines of how you're allowed to use their logo, what you're allowed to say. I know at Inhabit, um, I'm not allowed to put our logo or our name on anything. Everything has to come out of our marketing department um, because it's got to go through because we're healthcare. It's got to go through lawyers and Medicare guidelines and everything else. So also just be aware of what is happening within your own company and using your own logo if there are rules in place for that. And that's... That's a great point, Heather. Um, your specific industries, I've worked in a wide range of industries, but working in advertising has exposed me to an even wider range. I used to work at a home builder. They needed to have the equal opportunity uh, housing logo on everything that went out. They needed their uh, construction license, their builder license, their, um, I think it was the the realtor license for the business itself. All of that had to be on anything that went out. They had to have disclaimers that were the size of Texas. Yes, on billboards. And they didn't care. The lawyer said, make it as small as possible. As long as it's on there, we're good to go. So these kind of things you, you want to be aware of when you're creating designs, whatever it, your specific industry that you work in, just be aware of that. If it's something like working as a mortgage lender or a realtor, because a lot of the times, I, I don't know how many people are in this uh, discussion right now who are, are realtors or something like that, where they can do it kind of freelance almost and build their own business. Those are things that you need to know as far as whatever designs you're creating, be aware of whatever regulations you may have in your industry or for your company. Um, Global events, that's that's something that's super important. Uh, be aware of what's going on in the world when you're creating designs. Uh, you could end up creating something that unintentionally gets connected to something else. I think I just saw recently, there's a whole backlash of, I don't know if anybody follows social media like I do, like a, a, the nerd that I am, but there's huge backlash happening right now against celebrities and people are blocking them in troves. And it all kicked off with one specific creator. I think her name is Haley Bailey on TikTok uh, at the Met Gala quoting Marie Antoinette, because that's not actually where the quote is from, saying, let them eat cake. And I want to say it was Vanity Fair less than three days later posted um, one of the Jenner sisters. I think it was Kylie Jenner with her her baby um, and she was dressed in, you know as Marie Antoinette for Mother's Day but they didn't think about that because that photo shoot was from 2020 or 2019 um, and immediately within 10 minutes had to take the post down because the amount of backlash that they were receiving and they didn't even think about it that they saw a mother a baby they said put it up there and get going so when creating designs just just think about that you always want to know what's going on in the world. And while we all may not follow politics or world news or religious news or anything like that closely, anytime we create something, we at least need to be cognizant of what's going on around us in the world. Um, even just from color choices alone can set something off in the wrong direction. So just make sure that you're doing the research before you're doing the creation, especially if it's something that's really going to be out there in the public. Um, to make sure that you are protecting yourselves, protecting whichever company, whether your company or if you're an agency, um, your clients, and just making sure that you're keeping everybody's best interest in mind um, and you're not going to potentially sway one way or another funding anybody. So, yeah. On that one. You, you definitely don't want to back yourself into a, a corner unintentionally on design alone. So this kind of harkens back to the copyright slide. Just err on the side of caution if you're unsure. I mean, there's a whole situation happening, whichever side you may be on. Um, if you pick specific colors unintentionally, it could people could think that you're on one side of the argument or another side of the argument because based on flag colors, things like that, um, you know, a lot of things happen in the world and it's impossible to stay up to date with everything. But with this, with design in general, it, the other thing, as far as previewing goes, 
sampling is another great thing showing which i did not include in here but showing it around to different people ask your friends ask your colleagues ask your boss ask the legal team err on the side of that one because legal teams like to ruin everything um but ask around and say hey look at this design what do you see do you see anything um i designed a t-shirt one time and i saw nothing wrong with it and yet a colleague of mine said that looks like a heavy set man with his member hanging out and i said okay that's not what i was going for but thank you for sharing that uh i'll redesign it then i didn't see it you saw it so that's all that matters to me and it just kind of helps to think you know keep these things in mind when you're creating stuff that you may be so focused in on the project that you're working on that you might not pick up on these things and so being more aware and more um, involved in what's going on and asking friends, asking family, it helps. So one other thing that honestly I need to get better at looking at, um, but is super helpful is Canva actually has a blog where they upload, um, completely free. You don't have to have the pro to access it. A wide range of topics. Um, they cover marketing, small businesses, social media, um, storytelling, video editing. They go down the gambit of everything possible and it's all free for you so go right in there dive right in and see and i would start there and look around if you have a specific question or maybe something is not working on canva i guarantee you someone on the canva blog has put together a piece and said several users have had issues with this let's address it how do we work on it yeah and even canva's got a tiktok so you've got little biteable things even on their social media pages that are going to show you little things like I just pulled this up now, but it is a little short video on how to make your fonts transparent. So you're picking up the animation behind it. So use their blog, use their social media because they're going to show you these little tips and tricks that you may not even know and do them so precisely so it's easy to follow. So I added this in because I am not, <laughs> I should have opened with this, but <laughs> while I do have a background working in graphic design, I am not a professional graphic designer. I'm not formally trained. That's why I specifically chose Canva uh, as my tool because it is easily accessible. I've worked with Adobe products. I know how to use them, but I am completely self-taught in every area of graphic design and video editing that I have ever taken an approach to it. Um, Google it, always Google it. <laughs> that's if, if all else fails and you don't know what you're doing google it somebody else has dealt with it i guarantee you <laughs> and youtube it as well the amount of tutorials for canva that are on youtube go for it do it believe me i've gone down that rabbit hole it's a really good rabbit hole to go down and you may surprise yourself, right? You may be looking for a solution to a problem and you could end up finding a, a design step-by-step -step tutorial essentially in YouTube or on Google on somebody's blog and you can end up recreating their design but with your own spin and have something completely different that you didn't expect to end up with that ends up great for you. I always say Google it and or YouTube it, look it up online because I guarantee you seven billion people on the planet, somebody else has ran into it before you. Lastly, uh, we're all human. Mistakes will happen. And yes, that typo is on purpose, but mistakes will happen. You're going to print something with a typo. I've had it happen. I've had $50,000 campaigns, $100,000 campaigns that have launched and somebody said we left something off or we didn't realize that this person looks like this, or we didn't realize that somebody could be perceived as decapitated or that the tagline could be offensive because we didn't ask enough of our focus groups. It's going to happen. And unfortunately, that's just the name of the game. You're not perfect, but staying aware of global events, asking the people around you, um, previewing things multiple times and stepping back and letting stuff breathe for an hour or two, a day or two, coming back to the design, those are all things that help reduce that greatly. Um, and I'm also big on, they make it so easy to download a static image that when in doubt, print it out sometimes where you're just like, there's so much copy, you've done so much editing and moving things around and you're just 
we all get tired of it. Our, our eyes get tired just staring at screens all day. So once in a while, when in doubt, print it out and take a look at it in its hard copy form because you may pick up on things that you didn't notice while it was on your screen. And with that, uh, do we have any questions? We're ready for them. You're asking them in the chat. I don't know. Shahab said you rocked it, which you did. Agreed, Shahab. No questions? We're I can't I can't find the chat. I do have one. What is uh the importance of working in vector art as opposed to raster art for your logo and things like that? I mean, has has it come up these days where you can work in bitmaps and get a good billboard or or should you stick with vector stuff? Um oof, that's getting into the pro pro, which <laughs> I will say, okay, so vector art is um the standard vector, from my understanding, the way that the files are layered and the fact that it does not have a background, um, typically when you have the logo or some kind of creation, if it's not a vector file, vector will typically not have a background. The way that the files are layered, it makes it easier to work into programs like Adobe and like Canva, and it's usually a higher resolution. So packing right. more pixels yeah. into the design so that when you size it up, you're not getting that distortion in color. You're not losing value. You're not, um, things aren't coming out blurry. I always say vector, if you can, just because it's higher, more widely accepted, more um, widely available, um, if possible. You can upload some files into Canva. Let's say you steal somebody's logo online. Like not that I would ever do it for presentations for, you know, AMA. And they give it to us and that doesn't have a clear background. And I want to use it in a way that has a clear background. You can use the background remover on Canva. Um I I can't speak on the other versions of files, but I would always say pick vector. <laughs> yeah. Well it's got infinite resolution. Yeah. Is what a vector file has. It doesn't have resolution. It has infinite resolution. Yeah. So you're just always going to get something cleaner, crisper, and and actual professional graphic designers always prefer to work with vector files. They always um, want, the more you give them, the more happy they're going to be. You don't ever want to give them one version and be like, good luck, because then they're going to have to go fishing or hope to tweak it and rework it. And it just, yeah, is not ideal. All right. Any other questions? I don't have a question, but I, if I can just uh, do a quick anecdote about copyright. Um, uh, several times I've gotten uh, slapped on the hand uh, in, in one way or another. There was one where they emailed AMA Las Vegas about blog posts from 2012, where we don't even know who posted that blog post anymore. Where did they find the image of the, you know, business people shaking hands or whatever, but apparently it was just a Google image at the time and they uh, requested we take it down or pay them for the license fee. Um, also, um, I had tweeted something for work and it was what I thought was a creative commons photo, not even that unique of a violin. And this photographer employed a like a legal team that all this legal team does is it searches uh, Google for your photos. And if it pops up, they send you a cease and desist. And this company basically wanted $500 a day of every day it was on Twitter until the date it was deleted. So definitely be careful. You know, if you do the pro account with Canva, everything that's in there, you're essentially paying monthly for the licensing fee. So, yeah, that's that's definitely good to good to touch on. Thank you, Shab, because there there are I I worked in social media for almost ten years, and there are programs that scrape the internet looking for you can upload your brand kit um, and anything that you've created and 
it scrapes the internet looking through any images, through any tweets, through any posts, through anything, anywhere that's publicly available on the internet. And it files it all away. And it's like, do you want to contact these people? And do you want to file a copyright claim? Um, YouTube is awful with that, um, with music usage. It's it's tough. So thank you for that. Uh, I think, Chris, I think I saw you had another question. Yeah. Just real quick, uh, earlier there was reference to an earlier um, Canva 101 um, webcast. Did, did I miss something? Oh, no, just that's this. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. But so, so there was no no earlier Canva tutorial. Yeah. Gotcha. Thanks. There's nothing earlier. We can put one together for next year. Or we can have an advanced class and then a super beginners class. Um, I know we don't have many people with their cameras on, but do we know how many people who has not ever used Canva once in their life? Do we have anybody in the room that's like never really even been on it? Nothing. So everyone at least in here has been on Canva once or twice, from what I would guess. Once or twice. So I'm about as so I'm not beginner beginner, but super beginner, close to beginner. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we'll do next year, we'll do next season, we'll do a 101 class where we really get down into just how to basically use the templates and stuff like that. And then we'll do more of a super master class, really getting down into some animation and things like that That'd be um, funny. later in the year. So I think that's a great idea. Thank you. 